Welcome to Manifest with the Chakras. My name is Supriya Prasad, and this is episode four of How to Manifest with Your Chakras. So again, this is uh, episode four, um, and this is all about how money works with your root chakra. So let me explain a little bit about what the root chakra is. The root chakra is otherwise known as Muladhara chakra. And that is all about your survivability in your chakra. So this chakra is really about your base, your foundation. Um, and if, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook here, you can actually see where I'm pointing to. That's the lower part. That's the base of your spine. So what does this root chakra like really do within our bodies? Well, like I said, it's all about your revenue income streams. It's about your safety, security, your stability, and that does represent your revenue streams. For most people, it does represent money. Sometimes it can represent your shelter. It can represent shelter, home life, anything that really represents your safety, security, and stability. So today we are going to be talking about how money works um, within the root chakra. And this chakra is really all about how it impacts, how really money impacts your root and how you can switch it. So, okay, let's go back into really what, you know, not only what the root chakra means, but what the root chakra, how the root chakra works um, as far as how the root chakra works within all the other chakras, right? Within our bodies. Okay. So the root chakra, as I said, is the base, but it actually rules a lot of what you have going on in your body. So if your root chakra is like, you know, a little bit of a mess, you will um, have all of your other chakras will also be a, at least a little bit off balance because that root chakra is not in line. So if your root chakra is closed, and I always see, whenever I see reed chakras in people's bodies, like they either come like this or they're like this. There is really no in between. Um, and sometimes a root chakra is like, you know, a little bit open. So sometimes they're closed, sometimes they're super open, which is also an imbalance too. I often see this with um, the heart chakra. So anahata chakra. And that means it's too open, and that means you're letting a lot of people in. <laughs> so we will get to that when we come to the heart chakra. We did talk about that in our second episode um, with uh, Nithya Gopaldas. If you haven't watched that yet, please um, go ahead and watch that. Or if you haven't listened to that yet, please go ahead and listen to that episode. That's a really good episode on what the heart chakra really does. So... The root chakra is all about your foundation, right? Money comes into play. And it's not just money. It's all about how money comes into play. We talk a, a little bit about, I talk a little bit about how the inner child works within the chakras, within all the chakras. And I did talk a little bit about it um, in the third episode, the last episode I did um, with uh, Safriana, uh, Safriana Luna. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> plugging in a lot of my episodes here. No worries about that. But um, if you haven't, if you haven't gone into that, um, we talk, we talk a little bit more about the sacral there than the root. Um, the root chakra is really more about how do you feel stable in your life? What makes you stable? What makes you feel secure? And if it is around, and if you're having issues with your money, how can you switch that energy around? How do you switch that energy around your body? How do you switch the energy around money? 
how do you switch the energy around, you know, your safety and security and stability? So that is what we're going to be talking about a little bit more today. Um, if you are on here live, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Where are you guys tuning in from? If not, you can just say catch the replay. <laughs> um, and of course, if you're listening, if you're listening on the podcast, please leave a comment and um, please, please um, screenshot the podcast and put it in your stories on Instagram. We would love to see it. Okay, thank you. So, the root chakra and money. Money is a huge, huge thing I see. Um, that's an issue with a lot of spiritual um, entrepreneurs out there. Lots of people who are in this whole field, this new age field, there's a huge issue with money. Why is that? Why is there such a huge issue? Because people don't think that we should be able to charge our worth with money. And by the way, that's also a solar plexus issue, confidence. But it all comes back to the root at the end of the day. Root and confidence, um, those confidence issues with the root. We shouldn't be able to charge our worth. We shouldn't be able to charge, you know, those limiting beliefs that we see. We shouldn't be able to charge our worth. You know, I feel horrible charging a lot of money for things that should be, you know, for free and all that stuff. Doesn't mean that you can't, you can't do things for free doesn't think doesn't mean that you can't do things at discounted price doesn't mean that you can't do any anything like that but there is like a limiting belief around this um and that messes with our root chakra right that messes with our root chakra that messes with a lot of our um that messes with a lot of the chakras in our body but that does mess with the root chakra the most the biggest limiting belief I see is if I don't get this one client, if I don't get these clients, I'm never going to get clients that pay me money. Another limiting belief. Another limiting belief. Um, and I'm going to tell you why, because you're not, that's the energy. That's the vibration you're putting out there. You're putting that vibration out there into the universe where you are hi maria <laughs> hi maria um where you're putting that vibration into the universe where you are putting things out there that's making you think that oh these guys are only going to pay this much here's the thing guys you are what you attract <laughs> bottom line you are what you attract the universe doesn't understand Anything other than doing or not doing. If you are doing, it's going to make everything happen for you, for you to do. If you are not doing, it's going to make everything for you to happen to not, to not do it. You know what I mean? Doing and not doing. It doesn't understand anything between. So you can't, you can't go to the universe and say, I'm trying I'm trying. I, I really want this. I really want this. No, are you doing it or are you not doing it? That's it. You're either doing it or you're not doing it. I want $5,000 by next week. Well, are, are, do you want it or do you have it already? Do you want it? Or do you have it already? Because if you already have it, and if you if you already have it, the universe is saying, okay, let's get let's get you more of that. But do you you know do I uh, do you want it? I'm like, okay, the the universe is 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 putting that into process. But if you want it now, you're like saying, you're giving you're giving the language to the universe of. I want it in the future. You don't want it now. So if you're saying, I want $5,000, no, you already have it. See how that language gets switched around? Right? That language gets switched around. 
So when we're talking about the root chakra and money and our money and what our energy, the energetics around money, we also have to think about what was our limiting beliefs from our childhood. A lot of us have grown up with negative mindsets around money growing up. A lot of us, a lot of us have have negative mindsets around money growing up. I don't care who you are. You had a negative mindset around money. Probably. M most likely. I mean, if you, if you if you grew up like super if you grew up super rich and money was never an object and like all of that stuff and you had you had great money mindset, great for you. Wonderful. Wonderful for you. Most of us have not. And that's the thing. That's the thing. We, not, none of us like we grew up around a lot of us grew up around really negative mindsets around saving a lot and there's nothing wrong with saving there's nothing wrong with saving there's nothing wrong with doing all of this there is nothing wrong with that but here is what is wrong with the whole concept of things like well i need to save so i can get here what's making you think that you you have to save in order to get there right? I need to save money so I can get to Disneyland. So I can go to Disney World with my kids. What makes you think you can't go now? Are you going to wait till your kids are teenagers and, they're, uh, and they don't want to watch Frozen 2 anymore? No. Or hey, you might be a kid at heart and you want to go to Disneyland. Right? <laughs> what What's making you not go there now? And you know what? Here's the thing. Like, I and I and I get I get the um. I get the pushback from this. Well, I really don't have money. Good. If you really don't have it, if you really are, if you really just have two dollars in your bank account, that's fine. Fine. Okay. Let's let's save. Let, let's let's figure this out. Let's save. What can you have? What can you make it happen? what can what can you make happen right now right i can't pay my rent next month because my you know because like i got laid off i got laid off and there's no mon more money coming in okay what can i wh what can we what can we do now what can we do now <sighs> okay we can apply for another job we can apply for a job great Go Uber, great. DoorDash, great. Instacart, you know, great. Start a business, start a business, great. Start a business of two dollars in your bank account, great. Um, go call around, great. Like you know, all all of this other stuff. You can go to all these networking events. Go to networking events and you know make as many friends as you can and help you get referrals, great. Um, do all of this stuff for a lower ticket so you can have that two, that two dollars becomes 200 and 200 becomes 2,000. Put that to 2,000 and put like a hundred in your bank account until you reach the 3,000 or 4,000 it takes to get to Disney World for you and your kids or your family, right? And I always tell people, like, and this is the other thing, like, if you don't have, if you really don't have any money in your bank account right now, don't work with me. Don't work with me. I, and I do, and I say this because, like, as, as somebody that does work with people at all levels, but if you really just have $2 in your bank account, I don't want you working with me. I was like, say, I'm like, okay. It, and, like, I say this. Because there are, I have free, I have so many free things I have to offer. I have my free course. I have all of this stuff. Um, I have my free course. I have so much content that's free. I have like blog posts everywhere um, that you can, that everybody can utilize, right? Everybody can utilize these tools today and they're all free. Go ahead and use them. 
But when your root chakra and your money mindset is not always there, is not there, and you would rather put the $3,000 that you'd want to spend on coaching or $3,500 to $5,000 that you need to spend on personal coaching, personal business coaching, whatever, relationship coaching, um, that you, that you would rather use for a trip to the Bahamas. That's fine. And you would rather use somebody at an hourly rate at $100 an hour and, you know, for a call. That's great. That's all great. But just so you know, making these decisions affects your root chakra a lot. You know why? Because you are putting that energy out in the universe that, you know, my personal development and my coaching and like, and <sighs> I'm making this sound like this is about coaching and it's really not. The $5,000 that you want to do on personal coaching, business coaching, relationship coaching, like whatever, or the $5,000 that you want to spend, that you want to put as a down payment for your home, you'd rather go into the Bahamas or whatever. Um, or like real estate courses. I, I actually don't know how much real estate courses cost, so don't quote me on that. Um, or, real, or a real estate course. But would you rather do the real estate course and potentially have that have that money, five thousand dollars turned into twenty thousand each month at the end of the day? Or would you rather have money on a house that you would pay that you pay off in like, I don't know, twenty, thirty uh, Gosh, like a down payment on a house right now, I think costs way more than that. Um, or just have like a small investment into a property that will may may or may not turn into a hundred k that you would eventually sell. Can you tell that I'm not a real estate <laughs> person? Uh, yeah, I've worked with real estate agents before, but I'm not. <laughs> but so I mean, it's it's really the same thing. What is your money mindset around things like that? Right? So I want you to start thinking about that. Because there's a lot of people, and, I, I, and I'm going to go and talk about, like, the business world here, the business world, the spiritual business world, the new age, the new age um, market, as I should say. Um a lot of that where people think that they shouldn't charge their worth. Well, why Why is that? We're going to go back to that. I am jumping around here a little bit. I'm going to go back to that. Why do we think that spiritual entrepreneurs, spiritual leaders should charge what they're worth? No, well, I, I don't think we should charge what we're worth because, you know, I just don't think so. And like, you know, I just think that these guys are all fakes anyways. And, you know, the Jay Shetties of the world, like they, they like, they, they all like plagiarize and everything. I'm like, mm, no, no, sorry. No, that's not true. That's not true. Because. If I if I had my first thought, if I believed in all of that, I really wouldn't be where I am today with my with my own coaching. And I'm talking about coaching here because a lot of people in the spiritual like field are coaches. But the thing is is that when we are in this field, we are, A, we're bound to get scrutinized. You should see some of my lives that I do on TikTok, especially on TikTok. I get at least one person coming on there telling me that Jesus needs to save me. And I always get a lot, I get trolls on YouTube a lot. So that, this whole thing, we need to figure this out, right? With our root. This whole thing with the collective, we need to figure this out with our root. 
And that all starts with how we reframe our minds towards money. How do we reframe our money mindset? How do we reframe that? Instead of saying, oh, they charge a lot. No, they're charging what they're worth. They're charging their value. I, I used to do social media for people. I used to be a freelancer, right? I used to charge 500 per platform, $500 per platform for, per month. And everybody thought I was crazy. There was a lot of people thought I was crazy for doing that. Because there's no way in hell you should be doing that. And there's no way in hell like you should. Uh, I'm like, what? What? There's people charging 2000 per platform. All right. There's charging people like I, I could go on and on and on about how creatives get screwed in the e-commerce, in the commerce industry. But this whole thing that we have about charging our worth we need uh, to be as a collective as a collective we need to say we need to charge our worth because it's all of what's in here it's intellectual property i saw a quote the other day like not the other day gosh this has to be two years ago about a couple years ago i saw this quote that I put on my LinkedIn, and it's so funny because I'm live on LinkedIn right now. Um, I put a quote on my LinkedIn, which got like some traction. And it said, it says something along the lines of, I'm not charging you. I'm not charging you for the amount of hours I'm putting into my work. I am charging you for the 10 years plus experience I had to make everything work for you in 10 minutes. That is why I'm charging. The more we charge our worth, the better. And that all starts with reframing what we have learned from our childhood. Mom and dad had to go on coupons. Mom and dad had to go on food stamps. Mom and dad had to go on this. Mom and dad had to work two to three jobs to make ends meet. Mom and dad fought, fought a lot. Or maybe you didn't have a mom or dad. Maybe you just had a single mom. Mom had to work four jobs to make ends meet. Mom had to work like, mom had to go on food stamps. Mom had to like cut out coupons. Mom had to... You know, mo mom had to constantly call like our, you know, our grandmother to watch us because she had to go on another interview for a job that she had um, as a kid because we never had money. We always had to, you know, we, we sometimes we didn't eat. Sometimes we didn't eat at night. Sometimes we didn't like, sometimes we didn't eat at night. Sometimes we didn't like have all of these all of these things that other people had sometimes we I never really had a birthday you know I never ever I never really had like a birthday party growing up I never really had all of these wonderful things I didn't have like I know for me one year I didn't even have Christmas gifts we didn't get Christmas gifts I didn't even know that until I got older that we just had sweaters sweaters that we got from the supermarket that we just had to decorate <laughs> you know what I mean and that was because, and I didn't know at the time, we didn't have any money. You know what I mean? So that sticks with us in our minds. That like gets conglomerate in our minds. It gets put into the back seat. And then we don't know until like we get older why we are saying no to something that could help us something that could help us and again guys if you really don't have the money don't do it if you really don't have the money don't do it but i'm saying if you have something that could potentially help you and potential and i and i've spent a, a quite a bit of money on things that have helped me that a lot of people, especially some of my family members, were like, are you crazy? Why are you, why are you taking out money from these savings? This savings account 
that was meant to be for this, this, and this, so on and so forth, for this, for just this. And well, first of all, it wasn't just for this. It's for my health. It's for my mental health. It's for my, it's for my well-being. It's for the betterment of myself. And unless you face, unless you want to actually go on this journey with me, unless you want to go on this journey with me, right? And better your mental health, better your personal development, better yourself as a person, as a business owner, as a person, as like somebody who wants to be um, a greater citizen in this world, don't tell me like how I should be using my money for me. So that is the question you have to ask yourself. Do you want to break those generational, like, I don't want to call it curses. I really don't, I really don't like the use the word curse. I would say that generational trauma around money. There is generational trauma and generational trauma around money exists. Fights, divorces, things like that happen because of money. And marriages because of money. Lots of relationships um, get broken up or, you know, end because of money. But they also come together because of money. Let's not, t let's not take that as a bad thing. They can also come together because of money. Money can also do good things for us. And let's, let's start to reframe our mind around money. Right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you guys to go back to your childhood on when you first started learning that money was a bad thing. I can bet, like, that's probably, and I can tell you right now, that's probably between the ages of four to eight years old that you first learned about it. So I'm going to give you a hint there. Um, and by the way, zero to eight years old is all in the root chakra right here. That's actually in the root chakra, zero to eight years old. Um, and between four days is when we start to pick up our memory. And when we pick up on our memory, um, when we pick up our memory on things like money and things like finance and things like all of that stuff, and a lot of these things are unconscious because I also remember my teachers growing up talked very negatively about money because, you know, they're teachers, right? They're teachers. They, they make what they, at the time, I think they made like 30K max a year. Um, and this was a very bad part <laughs> of the outskirts of Detroit, right? Um, I was in the very, yeah, I, I was in Flint, Michigan, like not, not a good area. So these teachers were already angry at the world and us. <laughs> and sometimes they did take it out on us a lot. And they, they certainly took it out on me. Um, I can tell you that. Um, because I was just a curious kid. <laughs> I was a curious kid and I was just like, talk I was just like hey what's this what's this what's this and like teachers got annoyed and some teachers got annoyed with me quickly and you know I but I wanted to learn I wanted to learn so bad but I also heard them talking so negatively about money and money is oh thank you so much Maria must have needed to hear this today. Always need, always good to make sure my vibrations are good. Yes, yes, there we go. There we go. Yeah. I mean, I'm so glad you're in alignment, Maria, too. Here's the thing. When we have other people talking so negatively about money, when we had other people, like when we're in environments where you know, blue collar, blue collar environments, like how I grew up with. And blue, yeah, blue collar environments that I grew up in. And I know that a lot of people on here, a lot of people on here have grown up in similar blue collar. And it's very, very, very hard to 
reframe our minds as saying like money is good. Money isn't the root of all evil. We do what we want. I always say money is an amplifier of who you really are. Money and fame are like money, fame, and alcohol are three things that bring out the person that you truly are on the inside. Money, fame, and alcohol. Those are three things that bring out the true you and true person that you really are. And, and that's why you see when, when people are drunk and they're angry and all that stuff, that means they're angry inside. That usually means they're angry inside in their soul and they're super hurt and that they only knew, you know, you hear, you hear men doing this, but not a lot of women, women, women who are, who are angry drunks, um, have a lot of masculine energy in them. And, and if they're super angry when they're drunk and they get like all, that means they have a lot of masculine energy in them and they don't know how to retrieve it usually means that, you know, I could, I could go into a whole like thing about that. Um, but whenever you see somebody famous and then you're like, oh, they're such a a-hole because they're famous. I'm, I'm censoring myself now because I know I'm on multiple platforms and I don't know which one will demonetize or whatever. <laughs> me um but the god they're such an a-hole um they're such an a-hole and i'm like no they kind of always be they were kind of always an a-hole you know they were always like that you, you were just they were always like that or you know i'm gonna use like or there's just just this big celebrity this big celebrity name like out there and like you would hear people you hear some people like allegedly say that this guy was not that was super kind and he and he changed because of fame he didn't change because of fame they didn't change because of fame they were already that person they already knew what they were going to do see they already knew what they were going to do <laughs> they were they already knew what they were going to do when they became famous and they just did it. They already had that inside of them. Same thing with money. Money isn't evil, people are evil. Right, there's a lot of good things people do with money too. You should always give. You should always give with money too. Like, oh, people are giving because of the tax breaks. No, you should no. That's not that's not a reason to not give. Right? Let's fix that money mindset. Money and, and I'm not gonna give you affirmations here. I'm not gonna give you affirmations. And like affirmations are good. And yeah, I could tell you, I could there's like a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, out there where you can just play at night. I actually do this. I play like some of these affirmations at night. You can do the Bob Proctor meditation at night. Not a, not the biggest fan of that. Not the biggest fan of Bob Proctor. I mean, I like his stuff, but I mean, it's not, to me, it doesn't always resonate. <laughs> um, but you can do ask formations. Why am I so wealthy? Why is it that people pay everywhere I go for me? Why is it that I have a partner that does this, this, and this for me? You know, here's the thing. When you put, when you frame it as a why, why is it that I am so wealthy? Your brain, especially when it goes at night, your brain is going to, is going to rewire itself in a way. Oh, it's because I'm doing this, this, and this. It's not going to go in a way where it's like, oh, I am wealthy. And your brain is going, no, you're not. This is why you're not wealthy. But if you're going to, if you say it in a way where it's like, why am I so wealthy? Why am I so rich? Why am I so in my flow? Why is it that I have, that I always have an overflow in my bank account? If you put that as a why, 
at the end of the day, you can see, you can see the difference and putting it at night where it's going in your head. And I actually had people in my dreams, the people I see in my dreams repeat these <laughs> in my dreams. I've actually had people repeat these in my dreams before, and I just thought that was funny. <laughs> um, that changes your mindset. That changes your mindset, right? So I want to leave you guys with this at the end of the day, which is think about when, when you're doing the root chakra meditation. And here's how you do a root chakra meditation, by the way. You take a deep breath in. Inhale for four seconds. Hold for four seconds. Like so, one, two, three, four, and exhale. <laughs> you belly breathe. So as you breathe in, your belly goes out. And then you hold. And then for four seconds, and then for another four seconds, you exhale and the belly contra contracts in. All right, so let's do that, right? Inhale, belly out. Hold. Two, three, four, and exhale. Contract the belly in. All right, so do that again. Inhale in. There. And now put your hands right on your root chakra. And then imagine that there's a white light coming from the sky above, coming straight down to your root. And I want you to imagine a white golden light with abundance and gold coins still coming straight down to your root. Inhale in. Hold. And exhale any beliefs that came around you. Inhale in that good energy. And then exhale that out. I want you to repeat that for like five minutes every day and then journal about all the things that are coming to you at that moment, as it is in the present moment. Don't say I want, say I am. I am wealthy, I am this, I am that. But then also, when you go to sleep, saying why is it that I'm so wealthy? That is how you heal your root, and that is how you heal your money mindset. And, and of course, and again, I also want to reiterate, when you go into your meditations, go back to the time where you first learned how why money is bad. Go back to that child and begin to love that child. And you begin to reparent that child into thinking that money is good, money flows to you, money is amazing, money no, no uh, you go like, no, sweet baby, money, you have everything now. Everything is limitless. You are limitless. You can do anything you want with money. And you need to really nourish that inner child into that root chakra around, specifically around money. And once you do that, you will start to see the difference in the vibration and into the energy flow around money, right? You'll, you'll, begin to, you'll begin to see that difference into the energy flow. You also need to switch the energy around you, put new things into your life, maybe switch the energy of your environment, maybe move. You might need to move, get to a new office, work at a new place. If you work from home, work at a coffee shop. That's what I did. Work at a coffee shop, work at, um, just work, work somewhere else. Take a trip, work somewhere else. And then you'll see the difference. Switch that energy around you, put candles around, put like crystals, whatever, whatever you feel like. You will start to see the difference within 21 days. 
All right, guys, if you guys want to learn more, please go ahead, check out my free course, Switch the Energy of Your Life. Uh, that is in the link in, in the podcast notes and in the description box. Please, 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 please leave a note, comment if you like this podcast. Like, comment, whatever you want. If you're watching, if you're listening to this on the podcast, please rate this five stars. And um, yeah, yes. And I, I really love and cherish all of you on this live. And I, I appreciate every single one of you. And I don't take anything for granted. Grateful for everybody on here. And that's something you should also note too. Be grateful and find something grateful every day in your life. Be grateful. If you have just $2 in your bank account, be grateful for the $2 that you have. All right. Thank you guys. Take care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye.